Good morning. It is Monday, March 29th. It's the Monday of Holy Week. Uh, this week, I am going to try to bring you a text reading and reflection and prayer each day. I hope that when we do this together, that I will be able to bring you something and the Holy Spirit can work with what I'm going to bring and plan it into you. So you can use it for the rest of this day, the rest of the week, the rest of on and on and on and on. Let us, uh, before we begin, go ahead and mark in your Bibles our passage for this morning. It's Hebrews chapter 9, 11 through 15. All right, once you have that done, let us pray. Open our lips, O Lord, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Create in us a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within us. Cast us not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from us. Give us the joy of your saving help again, and sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. All right, let's get right into our passage, Hebrews chapter 9, verses 11 through 14. Hear now the word of God. But Christ has appeared as the high priest of the good things that have happened. He passed through the greater and more perfect meeting tent, which isn't made by human hands. That is, it's not a part of this world. He entered the Holy of Holies once for all by his blood, not by the blood of goats or calves, securing our deliverance for all time. If the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkled ashes of cows made spiritually contaminated people holy and clean, how much more will the blood of Jesus Wash our consciences clean from dead works in order to serve the living God. He offered himself to God through the eternal spirit as a sacrifice without any flaw. That's the word of God for the people of God. And we say, thanks be to God. So I would call this passage theologically packed. And we just have a little bit of time. So what I just want to say about it is there's a lot of language here that's uh, rooted in Old Testament religious uh, rituals and customs and um, the roles that the that the priest played and, and the holies, the tent, the meeting tent, which became the temple eventually, and how the people to to bring themselves back in relationship with God, to be forgiven. Um, the law that God had given them was to take these animals to sacrifice. And the blood of the uh, animals when they were slain would pour down on the altar. And um, that was supposed to forgive the people of their sins. What this is talking about is it, it doesn't work. <laughs> Uh, humans cannot cannot sacrifice enough. They cannot do enough. They cannot they cannot scramble or scrabble or um, do every you know religious uh, checkpoint on their own, and it ever be enough for the kind of full and righteous forgiveness that brings us in, into relationship with God and Jesus. He gives us that salvation. Okay, so uh, the writer of Hebrews here is saying that would never work. It will never complete the job. But God has a, had a solution. Basically, millions and millions of gallons of blood over a, thousands of years poured out onto the altar in the in the in the meeting tent or in the temple once the, the temples were built. Um, it could never. No amount of blood could ever make us purified and holy enough to be in the presence of God. 
And so what God did is he sent Christ to be that priest. And he sent Christ not just to be the priest, but to be the sacrifice, the once for all time sacrifice. So what jumps out at me, uh, verse 12, I'm just going to read that again. He entered the Holy of Holies once for all, once for all, by his blood, by his own blood, not by the blood of goats or calves. In doing this, he has secured our deliverance for all time. And then it goes on to say, how much more will the blood of Jesus wash our consciences clean from dead works? And then it goes on, he offered himself to God through the eternal spirit as a sacrifice without any flaw. Uh, the I'm reading from the Common English Bible. That's the translation that you just heard. So Jesus, the altar that Jesus was sacrificed on uh, was the cross. And, and Jesus going, he, he's, he performed the work. Uh, he, he went up on the cross. He, we know he broke, he broke upon that cross. His body was broken. He, he, uh, he bled out. His blood was so, so, he was so completely empty and drained of blood that when they, when they speared him in the side, um, it was just water that rushed out. So God is telling us that Jesus has already done the work. And yet so often we keep Jesus hanging on the cross because we think that we're not good enough to claim the offer of grace that God has given us, the work that was done on the cross by Jesus. You know, and we do this in lots of different ways. You know, um, I've heard a lot. I've done too much wrong. There's too, there's too much that I have done. God will never forgive me. Or I'm not good enough. I don't have gifts. I don't have graces. Um, you know, I am not going to forgive that person, and so God's not going to forgive me. I mean, we could go on and on, but when we do that, we're basically saying that Jesus only did the job halfway, or Jesus did it good enough for everyone but us. And the image that I always get is we keep Jesus on the cross when we do that, and you know, one way to think about it, uh, think about the richest, the richest man in the world. He sells everything he owns and he takes that money, converts it into gold. And he puts all of that gold in a vault and he gives you the key, you know, your name on it, the key to all of that gold. And it's like having that yet starving, starving, not having food in your pantry, and claiming that you're starving, that you can't afford to buy bread and you won't buy bread and you'll say you have no money and you're leaving gold in the vault. But in this, in regards to receiving the salvation, the grace and the love that God offers us through Christ, through the cross, you know, gold doesn't suffer for us. Gold could sit in a vault for all eternity and not be claimed and not suffer. But Jesus suffered for us. So not only are we not we're refusing to claim the work that Jesus has already done, but we're we're saying that the suffering wasn't enough. You know, Jesus needs to suffer a little bit more to let his sacrifice be to the level that would cover us. And, you know, another way to think about it is, it's like being in a, in a boat out at sea and being under the water and, and holding on to a rope tied to the boat and just trying to hold that boat in one place. It's impossible. And imagine you're doing that and there's an anchor. There's an anchor right on the deck of the boat that you could use to anchor the boat, but you don't. 
so today our we're going to do a little self examination i challenge you to do uh some self examination you know search yourself um what did christ die for that you are not claiming is it forgiveness not willing to forgive yourself blaming yourself for something not that you did, but what someone else did to you. Um, maybe shame, guilt, all these things that uh, you put a wall up. We all do. We put a wall up and, um, you know, we, when we do that, it's like this, you know, that wall gets thicker and thicker and, um, you know, we can no longer see the empty cross because the empty cross is the cross after the resurrection and it's the resurrection it's the three days after the sacrifice on the altar of the cross that jesus he proves that he has taken the sin of the world and he has taken it all the way to the grave and he's defeated satan his only opponent defeated satan and he is now resurrected he's alive and you know, he did that. He did that for you. It's paid in full. It's paid in full. It, it's right there. The offer is right there. Once for all time, for all people. Yes. Even you. Let us pray. Oh, God of this morning. God of all creation. God who spoke that first dawn so long ago. You brought the universe into existence with a word, a breath. And then you breathed life into dust and you created people, humankind, in the image of you. And God, through all this time, you know, you give us everything that we need. You've even, you've even given us Jesus Christ, uh, who's done the work that we could never, ever do for ourselves. And so this morning, God, we want to claim that. We want to receive that. Uh, we're ready to approach the cross and the altar and, and, and lay it down because we want to tell Jesus that he has saved us. He's done what we cannot do for ourselves that we could never save ourselves. And so God, as we go through this day, Lord, and we reflect on uh, any walls that we put up between you, any of the, the excuses and, you know, the reasons, the way that we minimize our own needs or think that we're not important enough or we're not good enough or we're not pretty enough or we haven't done enough in the church you know, we, you know, you know our hearts, um, you know our hearts. And so as we go into self-examination today, Lord, I know that um, your Holy Spirit who, who searches the deep things of God, of your mind, plums the depth of your mind to communicate to us your word, your will. And today, God, I know that you would speak Speak into each person. Breathe through the Holy Spirit. The awareness of, of what it is, God, that they're holding on to, keeping you on the cross. And just pray, Lord, that each of us would find some release today, that we would realize, that we would claim it, that we would hear you say our name, and that we would know that Jesus was the perfect, the perfect sacrifice once for all time and just help us this day, God, and just continue to, to have joy in your presence, uh, to count our blessings, to look for ways in the world that we can make a difference, that we can carry out the work that we've been forgiven and filled to be able to do. And we, we love you. We thank you in Jesus name. Amen.